On today's show, in a blow to Waymo, FCA partners up with BMW and Intel on autonomous cars. Chevy cuts the price of the Tahoe by thousands, and John answers your questions and comments in You Said It. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The race to develop autonomous cars is really heating up. A year ago, BMW, Intel, and Mobileye formed a partnership to develop a scalable architecture for autonomous cars that could be used on all kinds of vehicles from different automakers. Now FCA is joining the group. FCA will continue to collaborate with Waymo, but says it will be much more heavily involved with the new group. The BMW Intel Mobileye Group is developing an autonomous platform that will be capable of level three to five automated driving. 40 vehicles will be tested by the end of this year with the goal of a production car by 2021. And they're welcoming any automaker to join the group. In January, we reported on a new French company called Easy Mile operating autonomous shuttles in Paris as a way to reduce traffic and pollution. Now they're expanding to the US. Starting later this month in Arlington, Texas, the Easy 10 shuttles will operate during Rangers and Cowboy games, as well as during concerts and other events. They're free to use and can seat up to 12 people, which is six more than the ones used in Paris. And even though the Easy 10 will stop for people and other objects on its own, there will still be an operator on board. Coming up next, how and why Chevy cut the price of the Tahoe. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. New products are what the car business is all about. That's what brings customers into the showrooms. So it's important to keep up to speed with what's new in the global marketplace. Here's the latest model from Opel, which is coming out with a passenger variant of its Vivero commercial van, which is a rebadged Renault traffic. One of its unique features is the second row of seats, which can spin 180 degrees so backseat riders can talk to each other face to face. The new Vivero makes its official debut at the Frankfurt Auto Show in September. In an effort to bring the Tahoe into more buyers' price range, Chevrolet is introducing a new base model called the Custom. Its starting price is a shade under $45,000, which is $3,500 less than the previous base vehicle called the LS. In order to cut the price, Chevy cut out one of the biggest selling points of a Tahoe, the third row seat. It does, however, increase rear cargo space to 54 cubic feet. Other changes include 18-inch painted wheels instead of shiny ones, and it gets a chrome-accented grille. The new Tahoe Custom will be available at Chevy dealers in September. Coming up next, John is here with You Said It. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go, and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Here's the part of the show where I answer some of your questions and respond to some of your comments. G.A. Brannigan saw my predictions in yesterday's AutoLine Daily about who might become the next CEO of FCA. He does not want it to be the executive who heads up Jeep. Choose anybody but Mike Manley. He missed too many opportunities with Jeep, especially with the Wranglers. He is not well thought of in the Jeep off-roading community. All I can tell you, GA, is that Jeep sales are booming around the world. So while Mr. Manley may not be popular amongst off-roaders, the board of directors at FCA has got to be mighty impressed with his performance. By the way, we'll see the all-new Wrangler unveiled at the LA Auto Show in November. Drew saw our report that Ferrari's kicking around the idea of reviving an entry-level car like the old Dino. He says, entry-level Ferraris already exist. They're called Alphas and Maseratis. Well, they used to be called that, 
Now that Ferrari is a standalone company with no ties to FCA anymore, it has to look out for itself, even if that means competing against its former brothers. Rick says, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Mazda's calling their new engine compression ignition, but it still has spark plugs? Part-time compression ignition? Mostly compression ignition? You're right, Rick. It's a partial HCCI engine. The challenge that every automaker has faced developing these engines is getting them to operate smoothly in all rev ranges, from startup to full throttle. By using spark plugs for startup and possibly for some transitional situations, it looks like Mazda cracked the code. It may not be a pure HCCI engine, but Mazda is still talking about getting a 30% improvement in fuel efficiency, which will match strong hybrids at a lot less cost. Kit Gerhardt wants to know, do you have any info regarding how pay and benefits at transplants like Nissan compare with UAW represented Detroit 3 plants? Well, for full-time workers with years of seniority, the pay at the transplants is fairly close to what traditional UAW workers make. Those kinds of workers at Nissan make $26 an hour versus $28 an hour for those kinds of workers at UAW plants. But it's hard to make a great comparison. Newer UAW workers make far less than that, about $18 an hour. And the transplants use a lot of temporary workers who make far less money and benefits. Doc Wolf really likes that electric concept car from Infiniti. He says, the Infiniti Prototype 9 really strikes me as what Formula E really ought to be like. Modern 1940 style race cars. Somehow, that just seems a better fit for FE than F1 cars with batteries. Well, Doc, I gotta tell you, they're never gonna do that. They want Formula E to look modern, not retro. But I gotta tell you, I love your idea. I would definitely watch cars like the Infiniti 9 race around because so far, I just can't get into Formula E. Martin Scott heard my report on how Honda probably does not need to merge or join another automaker. He says, Honda going at it alone? So far, so is Ford. Ford's about 50% bigger than Honda and much like Honda, very international. Yeah, now it's going alone. But it used to have Jaguar, Land Rover, Mazda, Volvo, and Aston Martin under its umbrella. Honda has always been alone, although it did have a cooperative agreement with Rover until BMW swooped in and bought it. And finally, Sir 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 wants to know, looking at the big picture, why is ride sharing different from taxis? Somebody drives you to your destination. Well, the game changer is that app on your phone. It gives you the ability to hail a car wherever you are, not just standing at the curbside trying to wave down a cab. It lets you know exactly where your car is, when your car will arrive, who the driver is, and what the ride will cost before you even get in the car. And then there's the fact that it's almost always cheaper than a taxi. Hey, thanks for all your questions and comments, and keep them coming. You keep us on our toes. But with that, we wrap up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.